So just a warm welcome to everyone for the uh, weekly tutorial for uh, derivative trading. Now I have a, a number of things I want to show you tonight, um, which I think would be of interest to you, um, as always. And I've always uh, felt that the tutorials for derivative trading actually are very useful. Um, I'm not saying that the other tutorials are useless, I'm not saying that, um, but I find that uh, it is especially helpful for students. Um, from, I think, this week onwards, you may have noticed uh, we, are, we are going to start going into the topic of option trading and, you know, uh, understanding and managing and hedging the Greeks. Now that actually, if you didn't know, that is the core theme of this course. Okay, so I'll tell you now. Uh, so things are, are going to get quite interesting. And what I would like to do, um, so apart from the housekeeping and telling you a little bit more about assignment number one, um, so I'm going to tell you a bit about option pricing. Um, and then the long call spread versus the short put spread. I want to say something on that. Um, I want to say something on put call parity also. Um, just clar I want to clarify something which uh, students, in my experience, frequently uh, have a misunderstanding. Well, it's not really their fault. I think the, mis the confusion is in the slides. Uh, uh, we have some practice questions, which I'm going to show you uh, shortly, and I think these you, you will enjoy doing these. Okay? And then um, there are some some of your questions that I also try and answer. Okay, right. So that's quite a quite a few things to happen. Um, so this is the, the scheme. So that hasn't changed now. So the next lecture uh, is next week. I probably don't have to keep reminding you every week. Um, especially for this course, the, the, the schedule is fairly regular. Every Friday there's a lecture, every Saturday, Saturday there's a tutorial. I think it's going to be like that until the end of the course, basically. Okay. Um, now, assignment number one, um, please hand it in uh, on the uh, February the 2nd, which is a Friday, but however, please can you hand it in at 1 p.m. instead of at the end of that Friday. Okay, so please just have it in by lunchtime. Uh, a few hours, you know, if, I, if we give you until 6 o'clock, it hardly makes any difference. Uh, you have plenty of time and um, uh, we, we need you guys to work in teams of two, please. Uh, sir. Yeah, um, actually, thank you for asking. Um, if you go to Blackboard, I think I already have uploaded the, yeah, no, I, I will show you, no problem. Um, so in Blackboard, um, it's, in fact, there are some additional instructions uh, because I um, would prefer that you okay so here's assignment number one okay and you just upload it oops oh, don't do this to me okay we're back so the assignment is uh, for team of two now so I um, can you please form? We're going to need to form 15 teams. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Some of you asked me if we can form teams of three. And my answer to that was, well, look, if there, if there are a uh, whole number of people in this course, then I don't mind. But if the number is even, I prefer we don't do that. Um, 
there really there is really a, an issue of fairness. If every other team has two people, and you have three, okay, um, then your workload is is, is a lot, a lot. Anyway, that, that that is not relevant because we have thirty people. So why not just keep it simple, okay? So if you go to um, if you go to uh, the tutorial file, which I have uploaded, I know I'm not always on time. Uh, you just click on this, all right? Uh, then it takes you directly to to the to the spreadsheet. Now there are two students, so there are thirty students, as you can see, all right? So I can see that a pair of them have shown much initiative. I don't mind telling you who they are, well, you can see it, right? So there's a team called AAA. So nobody else, <laughs> 28 people do not have teams, okay? So why don't you do that um, by the middle of next week? Just, just help me out a bit, okay? Um, and team up with somebody. So you're gonna work in teams of two. And I have already, um, uploaded I've already uploaded the assignment specification to Blackboard now there is just one small change and I'm sorry I just wrote over it it used to say Feb 9 um, and I I think you don't need that much time okay uh, it's gonna do you more harm than good you know why because there is a second assignment um, if we ask you to hand in this one on Feb 9, then the second assignment will have substantially less time, uh, which is not good for you. Okay, so, and look, there's plenty of time, honestly. Um, and I already tried to give you quite a few clues last week to start you off. Okay, so hopefully that, that was an inspiration. Um, <coughs> sorry. The, Bad air in here. And um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Okay? The only thing I would say is um, don't. So in the past, we we had students who hand in a really really simple structure, like maybe the one I was showing you two weeks ago, just a uh, you know a, a zero coupon plus a partial call. Now, when I first showed you, maybe maybe you thought, wow, this is so sexy. But now, two weeks later, okay, you see that is just so simple. Um, so we had students in the past who handed in something like that, and then they started telling a stock story on, on the fundamentals of that company. This is not an exercise on fundamentals. This is an exercise on creative payoffs, okay? Puts, calls, uh, straddles, strangles, calls, spreads, butterflies, collars, whatever you want to put in, okay? As long as it actually works and is commercially feasible, okay? You got a hundred bucks. I don't, we don't want you to, to buy an option which will cost you $70 and then you still tell us that one year later this structure will be principal protected. That doesn't make sense, okay, for example, okay? Uh, in fact, this was not written by, this was written by Thomas. It's considered not uh, structured something too simple like a tag on the story, stock, test, and etc. Okay, and start telling the equity story. I didn't even know you wrote that, okay? Uh, structural originality will get you more points, okay? Uh, so yeah, try to form the teams, please, by uh, middle of next week. And um, when you're doing that, um, oh, what just happened? Oh, is this thing real time? Oh wow! Think uh, that you just updated that? Oh wow! I'm amazed. Okay, keep keep doing it. Well, maybe not now because now you need to focus. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna close that down. All right. Um, and if you if you update at the same time, you might you might get conflicting copies. Okay, so do it later. Do it tonight uh, around two two a.m. or something. Okay. 
Um, okay, so that is uh, assignment number one. Um, the final exam, I think it will be on March the 2nd, which is a Friday evening. Okay. Anyone who is not available for that time? Okay, that's good. Um, this is a schedule. Um, I don't mind telling you now, um, there are a couple of weekends where, unfortunately, um, I have, we have to meet on Sunday. I very rarely do that, um, but it's uh, some private, well, there's a friend getting married. I can't ask them to change the date, okay? Um, and, and so on, all right? So uh, on the, uh, uh, so February 11th actually is a Sunday, and so is February 25. All right, now, let me um, tell you a little bit about option pricing. And uh, maybe you have seen this graph many, many times, and you will see it a few more times um, in the coming weeks. Uh, what I want to point out uh, for some for some people is not um, immediately obvious, and that is when you are graphing the price of an auction. Now you've seen this many, many times. Okay, so this is the this is typically the payoff of a call option where this point is the strike. And let's let's say the strike was a hundred and then and then you can keep going. And here let's say one oh five then you have made how much money? Five dollars. Now I'm not I'm not counting the option premium, so I'm just ignoring that for a moment. I'm purely talking about the option payoff. Okay. So at maturity, if all goes well and you have a call option where the strike was 105 and the spot was 100, then of course your PL is $5. Now that's absolutely obvious. Okay, it's just the, the simply the intrinsic value. Now the, the, the trouble is when you look at most textbooks, this is how they teach you. They tell you what is a call. They tell you, oh, a call option is the right but not the obligation to buy something, and then they show you this diagram. It's correct. It is. Uh, it's only correct at maturity. Okay. So there, there are a lot of other things going on uh, prior to expiry. For example, if all else being constant, all else being equal, and Frank just loves saying that all else being equal, all else are never equal. But all else being equal, so let's say one month before, okay, it might look something like this. Yeah? And then maybe three months, I'll use a different color. Three months before, so, so this is, this is like one month. The option has one month to go. And let's say three months before, so all else being equal, what color should I use? Red. So three months before, it might look something like this. It's even higher. So what I am saying is that if you have, if the market was at the same price, so if the if your underlying is at 95, let's say, okay, then, of course, at maturity, this option has no value at all, none. Okay? 
because it's out, it's expired out of the money, it's expired worthless. But if it was one month before, it does have some value. And if it was three months, so let's say this is three months, it has even more value. Are you with me there? Now, this might be obvious for people who have a finance major or even trading background, but for those of you who are new to the topic of options, I think maybe you have only seen the straight line, the baseline, and this 45 degree, and it is 45 degrees, okay? but I want to make sure that you understand so option pricing uh, is more than just this one at the bottom. Is everyone okay with that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah? Um, now, you need to understand that because that is the basis of a lot of things that I will show you in the coming weeks. So please at least get comfortable with this very, very simple concept. Okay? A lot of things depend on you appreciating and understanding this. The first thing I will tell you, the first thing I will tell you is, so for example, um, all right, now I, I, I go and price a, a simple one month option. So I'm going to call up my old friend, optionprice.com. I'm sure you know what that does. Okay. And I'm going to price a simple option where let's say the underlying price was uh, 105. So that is the, the, uh, the so-called spot price and exercise, so that is the strike, is 100 days. I think this is calendar days, I think it is. So that's about one month. And interest rate, just cut it down to zero. I just want to keep things simple, okay? So we don't need these. Vol 25, I'll leave it there. And then you hit calculate. Now, what would be the absolute minimum price for a call option? here there is a price it cannot fall below that value what is that five dollars why intrinsic value in fact if it was five if it really was five you go out there at the speed of light and grab a, a, a truckload okay it wouldn't be five six dollars eight and eight cents Okay, now where is what is that extra one dollar and eight cents? Ladies and gentlemen, it is this. So this is what we're saying. So at 105, let's say, okay. So between here and here would be would be that one dollar and eight cents you just saw. And then the other five bucks is this one. So when you add them together, that's when you get six dollars and eight. Yeah, everyone is okay with that. Now, to take this uh, simple example even one stage further, now I change nothing except the dates. I'm not. I'm going to change it to ninety now. So that's three months. Okay. I'm going to hit calculate again, and watch what happens to the call price. It is now 6.08. It's going to be 7.96. So that is here. Okay. So from here down to here is 7.96. So you can pretty much work out what this, this should be. It's, it's just, um, um, it's, an, it's almost another $1.80, okay, $1.90. In fact, it's $1.88, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So please, uh, I'm starting at the very basic level you know i want to do that to get everyone on the same page okay 
So make sure you understand that. Um, and now something else. So I was um, I was actually just telling you last week uh, that. So another thing you uh, should keep in mind is that there is a big difference between being a price maker and a price taker. Okay. Uh, so here, this is a this is an actual page that you can get from Bloomberg or anywhere else of option prices on Apple. Now this is a little bit dated, but it doesn't matter. And at the time, um, at the time this was captured, the share price of Apple was around six hundred and nine dollars. You can see that here, six hundred and ninety-four, eighty-three, eighty-four, uh, six hundred and nine. Dollars eighty three eighty four. That's the bid and offer. That's very, that's really very tight. Okay, so this is a obviously a very liquid market with a lot of trading. That's the actual price of uh, the uh, one share of Apple. And then down here, this is how you can read it. So first of all, on the left hand side, there are call options. And on the right hand side, there are put options uh, with various maturity dates. So 19th of May, 16th of June, and 21, 21st of July, and so on. Okay. The date of this capture, this image was actually 26th of April. You can see that at the bottom, if you look carefully. Oops. Uh, now, the reason I want to show you this, uh, just as a reminder, so if you are a price taker, if you are a price taker, then you go out there and you basically, you need to, if you need to buy, you let's say an option on Apple with a strike of 600, a call option, okay, so there are bids and offers, and um, The bid was twenty four forty, and the offer was twenty four seventy five. If you are a price taker and you want to buy, I'm sorry, but you have to pay the higher price. And if you want to sell, you have to pay the lower price. Now, when you actually trade these things, even if you are a retail guy like me, you could actually enter your own corner. Maybe you say, I want to buy, buy, okay? I want to buy, so you don't want to pay this price. Um, and you want to buy at, let's say, 2420. You can enter that into the system and it, it will go directly to the exchange. And sometimes in a really quiet market, you, may, you even see your own order actually flashing up on the screen. So for that moment in time, you, you are the price maker. Okay? Because you enter in your price and you want people to trade on your your your, your data entry. Okay? So you're not gonna take, you're not gonna buy with the, the offer, you're not gonna sell the bid, but you enter your own price. So just be uh, be clear in your mind the difference between the price maker and the price team. Okay? Everyone is okay? Yeah? Um, so that is uh, price making. Now, um, I'm going to share with you, I want to share with you something else. Um, regarding the long long call spread and short put spread. Um, now this is um, this is a little brain teaser 
and I'll see. So it's actually it's quite good training for you, um, even though this is seven o'clock on a Saturday evening. Um, um, okay, so here is what I'm going to do. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go to go lecture. I think it's lecture one. Um, wow, so many spreads. No, maybe. Whole spread. Okay, so um, you can combine these options um, into different payoffs. Um, actually, some of you were asking me about the final one, and you know how you should. How you can how you can make a start? And I can tell you that you know from from my experience uh, working on a on a derivative desk. So quite often, what we do is um, you don't you don't think of okay, shall I use this product or that product? Shall I shall I use a call or a put or a knockout or this or that? We would quite often be on the phone with. With investors and with customers, and we we talk to them about what what is their view on market, and they will tell us, you know, if you're talking about the stock market, they think it's going to be range trading, or you know, they think it's going to be, uh, or or sometimes they think it, it has to go somewhere, but it's it's um, they don't know which direction, okay. And um, but they don't think the movements will be very extreme. So we start when we are talking to them on the phone. So we start making payoffs according to what they're telling us. Just why would they why why we're talking to them on the on the telephone? They would tell us, ah, oh, we think the market would do this. We think the market might do that. And we try to sort of do a, a graphical interpretation. Of what they have in mind, and then, and then we try to uh, we ask ourselves, okay, what 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 option components would give me a payoff like that? You know what I'm saying? So you work the other way. So th first you think of a payoff, whatever it might be. Okay, and I just drew one here. I don't even know what. Well, I kind of know what what options are needed here. Okay, but you you dream of a payoff first. And then you, you ask yourself, okay, what, what kind of options will get me there? Okay. Um, now, so that's just a, a, a digression. But what I was going to say, um, so here you have a long call spread, all right, and a short put spread. Now, first of all, can someone tell me how how these are put together? Does anyone know how do you how do you structure a long call spread? In other words, what what components are needed? Okay. It's like I ask you, how do you make spaghetti bolognese? Well, you need spaghetti. You need minced meat. You need a sauce. That's about it, I think. Well, it wouldn't taste very nice, but that would do. Okay? So, if you want to do a long call spread, what are the what are the requirements? Okay. Okay. Um, 
um, you know how you can become good at this is you keep doing it okay so you long a call at 95 you short you don't short a put okay you short a call you have a payoff on the rise you want to stop that you sell another call up here okay so you short the call and it's it's easy to to see that because you long a call it's like this whereas if you short a call it's like that so when you add the two together sooner or later the, the rising payoff will offset the the, the 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 one going down and then you have a flat line okay is everyone okay with that how about short put spread So, uh -huh. thank you. So, you buy the put at ninety five now. Here I know you are selling because you have a payoff going downhill. Got to be selling something, okay? Um, now this is not actually the question, okay? The question is so now. Let me just, um, so either long call 95, short call 105, or uh, long put at 95, and short put at 105, correct? That's what I just wrote here. Everyone is okay with that? Now, um, so because these two payoffs, they look identical, um, they will get you the same result regardless of where the stock price ends up. Now, let me try and price these things very, very simple and very, very quickly, okay? So I'm going to try to price, uh, and I'm going to assume, just to make it real simple, um, I'm going to assume for now that the uh, underlying price is at 100. Okay? Now, if the underlying price is at 100, then at maturity, you don't actually make or lose money with either structure. Okay, that's at maturity. But if it's before maturity, there is some value to this transaction, and I'm going to show you. Okay, so I'm going to buy. So I assume the underlying price is uh, uh, at a hundred, and I'm going to buy a. 95 call and let's just say it's um, 30 days okay just keep it simple and I'm going to hit calculate so if I do the long call spread this is what I can, I'm going to end up buying okay so I buy uh, uh, a 95 strike call which will cost me 597 okay so this one is 597 oh by the way i tried to share my notebook with all of you did you get a message from me are you able to access that you are are you able to to write or delete anything no oh, okay but you are you are able to access yeah. 
Okay, so you 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 could see it. Now. Is that because you are a regular user of Microsoft? No. Is everyone else able to do that? No. So, every week, you should be able to just go home and just open it up. Okay. Um, I, I have an entry goal to your emails when I might work. Some of you might think they were out of priority. Uh, okay, so that is uh, 597. Okay, so that's what you buy. So it's quite expensive. And to help you with the financing, okay, you are going to sell uh, an option at you're going to sell a call option at 105. Now the price of that is around a dollar and eight cents. So I'm going to write that down. One dollar and eight cents. So I'm kind of rounding. So this whole package is going to cost you four four eighty nine. So you have to pay. You want to pay this. Uh, you want to pay that now. Okay. Now, what about this one? If you were to price a 95 put, well, in fact, we kind of. Okay, now the other one is, is what? I can just read it off. So you want to you want to sell a 105 put, right? Okay? You want to sell a 105 put, and in fact the, the price is right there. It's six dollar and eight. So this one is uh, six oh eight. So when you sell that. Uh, someone is actually going to pay you for this, so you, you will receive some money. Please remember that. And now the other thing you need to do is you need to buy, you need to buy a 95 put. Is that going to be more expensive or less expensive than this one? It's, it, it will cost you less, right? So let's see. In fact, you, 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 must, you have seen that price flashing flashing around when, when, when I was pricing the, the call just now. But anyway, so 95 put would cost, uh, is, is, is uh, worth 97 cents. It's worth 97 cents. Okay, now don't forget, you look at this from your point of view, if you are a trader, okay, so here, I already told you, if you go long the call at 95 strike, you pay this amount, and you sell a call at 105, you receive this amount. So end up on a net basis, you have to pay, you pay 489, okay? Now what happens on the right hand side? What happens here is, if you, if you sell the 105 put, Somebody will pay you six dollar and eight, but for you to buy the put at ninety five, you just have to pay ninety seven cents. What does that mean? On a net basis, you are going to receive uh, five dollars and eleven cents. Aren't you? Yes, you are. Are you with me? You got me? Now, here comes my question. My question is, I just told you that these two structures will give the same economic outcome at maturity. So they are practically equivalent. So how is it possible that when you do one of them, you end up paying 489, but when you do the other one, 
not only is the price actually different, it's on the other side. You are you are receiving money. So what's going on here? That's my question. So when you pay up front. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yes. The yeah. Yeah. Well, that may be the case. Although here, I am assuming for simplicity that is symmetric. But you are right. Actually, you're both right. Somebody else wanted to say something. It is a it's a profit diagram. Uh, yes, it is true, but. Uh, you know, even if it's just a profit diagram, uh, if they give the same profit, then, you know, at, at the start, they cannot be so different. And not, not only are they different, they actually have opposite signs. Okay, But look, um, well, I'm quite impressed, actually, because there were times when I asked this question and students, they just give me a blank look. The, the, the fact of the matter is, on the left hand side, when you long a when you long a call spread, okay, if you want to talk in accounting terms, you long something. You actually have an asset. You pay for it. You have an asset. But over here, when you are short something, strictly speaking, you have a liability. That's another way to think of it, but. I am just saying something similar to what the three gentlemen are, are, are describing. Okay. Um, well, thank you for that contribution. Um, okay, now I want to tell you um, one more thing, which is. Uh, often a source of confusion and um, so please try to listen carefully now this is regarding uh, put call parity and first of all the classic definition of put call parity as some of you or in fact all of you would know is that the call price plus the discounted value of the strike, that's K here, okay, is equal to the put price plus the spot price right now. So I am just here reinterpreting that formula. Okay, so the call plus the discounted strike is equal to the put plus the spot. Okay, now so far so good. This is actually just from the textbook. Okay. Um, so that if you put it in words, it becomes this one. Now, what is the discounted strike? So if you look carefully at some of Govard's notes, he quite often would decompose that into the strike minus interest on the strike. You look carefully at his lecture notes that you will find that when he start talking about put, put call parity, the discounted strike, the so-called discounted strike, which came from here. This is just using continuous compounding. Uh, but let's just keep it simple. Okay? Whether it's continuous or discrete compounding, the discounted strike is just it's the strike minus the interest. Strictly speaking, this is actually, this is already an approximation. This is not entirely true. 
But anyway, then you rearrange the terms and you get call minus put is equal to the spot minus, so you just take this thing to the other side, that's all I've done, okay? Everyone still follow? Yeah? And then I take out the brackets and it becomes, so call minus put becomes spot plus the interest on the strike minus the strike. Now, I recommend you try to remember this formula. Okay? And uh, you see that in a lot of Govert's notes, and I will show you when he starts talking about put call parity. Um, I think that's actually page 24. Yeah, here we go. So he starts talking about put call parity in lecture number three, uh, page 24. And notice he not only is he using uh, symbols, so he says C minus P is equal to F minus X. Now he's doing that, but not only that, he calls this the future. And you might have heard him in the class, he does, or the forward, I don't know what he calls it, the future, the forward. I think he calls it the future, okay? Um, this is not the future, okay? I don't mean to contradict him, and I, I, have, uh, I have raised this with them before, and they are aware of it, but anyway, they, they are still using these notes and they, well, you, if you call it F, you don't get in trouble, okay? F is just F. If you start calling it the future, this is not the future. What is the future? The future, okay, I'll go back to my notes, okay? So you've got this call minus put is equal to spot plus interest on the strike, Minus the strike. Now this is correct. This actually is correct. And then he would, they would shorten it to C minus P. Let me write that here. Equals to F minus X. Whereas F actually represents the spot price plus interest on the strike. Where did that come from? It just came from above. Okay, now it's fine, you, you want to call it that, that, that's not the problem. The problem is you can't call this the future or the forward because it isn't, okay? Um, I think sometimes they do that in the class. I'm not criticizing him, I'm trying to help you unconfuse yourself. Are you with me? Yeah? So this, this equation is valid and it's very important, and you're going to see it again uh, from time to time. So just try to remember this, and whenever he says C minus P is equal to F minus X, where F is equal to the spot plus interest on the strike, it is true, just don't call this the future. Right? Because it well, what is the future? The real future is spot plus interest on the spot, not on a strike. Okay? Are you with me? This is just a simple classic definition of a future or a forward. Okay? So there is really only one circumstance when you say that C minus P is equal to F minus X and F is equal to S plus I strike and F is the future. There is only one circumstance when you can say that, and that is when the strike is actually equal to the spot itself. So you're pricing it at the money spot option, so-called, or ATMS, okay? 
otherwise it's, it's okay you can use this and you can even use this and you all know what f is f in this context is this relationship but please don't call it the future okay uh, is everyone okay with that yeah because i students always get confused they come back to me and say oh sam he just said that was the future okay i call it the see i've got f here gh that's your teacher okay covered all right okay uh now let me I had a question um, the other day. Um, Sam, what is the meaning of this equation? Lecture one, page 30. And hold on, is this lecture? No, this is not lecture one. So lecture one, page 30. The basic of trading, risk. Risk equals value of position multiplied by volatility multiplied by the square root of time. The hell is going on here? First of all, do you know what this means? Okay. Um, if someone here is thank you. If someone here asks this question, that's the name of some of your friends. Hello. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome. Um, do you know the answer to this question? <laughs> Did you ask this question? Do you want to sign in? Now, do you, uh, I tell you, in the coming weeks, actually, you do have quite a lot in the second half of the course. Uh, We'll see this. Uh, almost every week. Now, without going into the theory, which is awaiting you in the coming weeks, this is simply saying that if you, let's suppose you have um, what's a good way to explain that? Okay, there is a stock, there is a stock out there of a certain company, and the price of that stock right now is a hundred dollars okay and you look at the option market and you you look at what people are putting down for the implied volatility of that of, of, of options on on that on that stock and let's say you find that the option volatility on an annualized basis is 32%. Let's just say 32, okay? And in fact, if you, 
if you look at some of the, the, the pages that I was showing you earlier, uh, when you look on Bloomberg, when you price options or when you want to trade options, I don't know if you can see that clearly, but they do tell you uh, the implied wall. Um, I think the next column is the delta, and then the volume and the open interest. But there's a delta here, so there's an implied wall here. Uh, which for this example happens to be very, very close to 32 actually, 31.75. That is the 600 strike call for maturity May the 19th on Apple, which is at the moment trading at 600, around 610 dollars. So this is the implied call. Okay, so I can even take that as an example. Okay. So let's say you have, a, you have, you look at Apple shares, and uh, it's trading at six hundred dollars, six hundred and ten doesn't matter. Just I just round it. So let's say let's say the spot price is now six hundred, and you see an option, and the annualized volatility is thirty two percent. Now that is the parameter that you would put in here if you were pricing that option. It's really very, it's a lot, it's simpler than you think. And you plug in all the parameters, you hit enter and you get the answer. Um, but this volatility parameter actually contains, or is, it, it is an information signal from the option market, uh, which actually is very interesting, okay? So without going into this, all that theory, uh, which we will do in the coming weeks, okay, what, is, what does 32 actually mean? What the hell does that mean? Okay, why not 17 and a half? Why not 24? Okay, now first of all, you put 32 in there because right at this moment, this is where the market thinks is the fair value, okay? Number, now the market can be wrong, but you, you put that aside, this is what the market thinks, or how, how it should be priced, okay? Now there's meaning, there is meaning uh, in this magic number 32, okay? If you look at it, let's say on, now this is square root of time, so let's say on a, on a daily basis, Okay, what we are saying is that the risk, if you just have one share, okay, would be $600 times the annualized sigma divided by the square root of time. Now, here the square root of time, I'm, I'm talking like daily risk. So, one year has 256 trading days. So this would be equal to, you can see why I'm using 32. Okay. This is gonna be 32 over 16. So that is actually 2%. So this is equal to 12. Now, so all I've done now is I, I just said risk equals to 12. What, what does that mean? Okay, I'll tell you what it means. The option market thinks that for one day on a daily basis, okay, the stock price of Apple is likely to move $12. We don't know which direction, it could be up, it could be down, okay? But the option market thinks Apple stocks will move by $12 in the next day. Now, of course, it should be quite obvious to you if the wall was not set at 32, but 48, Okay. Uh, 
then then what happens? You're going to divide 48 by 16, which is still divisible, right? But now it's going to be 3%. So that means if vol, if the annual vol was given at 32, the daily movement is expected at 12. But if the if the annual vol was given at 48, the daily movement is expected at 18. Are you with me? Yes. Uh, Oh, yeah. Uh, why is it multiplied by the square root of time? Mm. Uh, it should be one over. Hmm? Yeah, actually, well, look, let me say this. What I have just told you is absolutely correct, okay? So you don't worry about that. But um, Ah, you know, you know what? Yeah, there is nothing wrong. This formula is correct. Uh, so sorry for confusing you. Okay, if you have a, if you have an annualized volatility, and I think in fact you're on the on the right point. Um, if you have a volatility which is annualized, okay, and you want to know what is the two year, the two year risk, two year, okay, you would multiply that by two and square root. Okay, now I don't want to know the the risk for two years. I want to know the volatility for one day. Now in, in terms of years, in terms of years, that is actually one over 256. So it is actually consistent. There's, there's no contradiction. Okay? Because one day is one over 200, so this is this time is in terms of fraction of a year. Are you with me? It's in years. So there is no contradiction. Are you okay with that? Is everyone okay with that? Hmm. Yes. That's what they're saying, right? What I just told you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because when you first asked me that question, I wasn't sure what the time represented, but this is basically just in terms of years, okay? So if it was one year, so your time would be one. If it was two years, time equals two. If it was one day, time equals 1 over 256. If it was one week, time equals 1 over 52. Okay? Okay. 
Yeah, so, you know, when you have a recession for a long, long time, of course your risk will go up. But it does not go up in a linear fashion, okay? Um, all right, so everyone is quite happy? Now, what I want to do, um, in the meantime, I... I wonder if we have time to uh, to have a bit of fun. Um, we only got 15 minutes. Why don't you? Okay, let, let, just give me a minute to check something. Okay. Um, I'll be I'll be right back. Uh, Okay, so why don't we why don't we do this? Um, now I um, can you all get out your 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 mobile phone or your tablet or your your laptop and try to sign on to the internet? Can you all do that, please? Now I know we don't have much time, but uh, let's just get you started, okay? And um, I need you to log on to you uh, reply. So I'm going to start a new session and So what I need you to do is go to http colon double backslash uh, reply dot mobi and can you join session number one two five zero six? Okay. Now I, I prefer you use your your real student ID if you if you can. If you can. I'm not going to check your answers or penalize you, but I just want to know how you guys are, are progressing, okay? So try to use your, your, your real student ID. And I'm gonna ask you some questions. Now, these will not be part of your assessment, so don't worry about it, okay? Um, I prefer, as always, that you just do it yourself. Don't, don't check to your neighbor because I'm not after the right answer. I'm after your answer. Okay? If you get the wrong answer or you're not sure what the answer is, this is the time for you to find out okay? when you see the answer. Not, not by telling you anything. So I want us to see how we are doing. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you. So is everyone locked on? We've got 15 people so far. Um, and so, yeah, so just join session one, two, five, zero, six, okay? And 18, I think we are, we are nearly there. Three, six, and
Okay, thank you. Um, now, so from now on, uh, each week, and this is why I told you, I think this, this tutorial actually is uh, quite useful. And I certainly enjoy, um, I enjoy running it. Now, I'm going to give you these questions and uh, we will go through them week by week. And so what I will do is first I ask you to have a go at it. And then I will explain to you what the answer is. And I will make some notes on these pages and I will let you have a copy of these uh, these questions, I will let you have a copy with my notes on it, okay? But first, I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of work, okay? So can you try to answer question one by, well, you've got five choices in front of you, I know, but um, don't pick E, okay? Just pick A, B, C, or D, okay? So have a go at question one. We may not be able to do more than a couple today, but I want to give you an idea how are we going to run this? Don't make it. You don't need to take a picture. You're going to get this. Okay. Then take a picture if you want. Yeah, t t t take a picture if you want. I'm not going to stop you. Um, the reason these are useful is that um, well, they're not and you'll find the exam, the questions will be in a similar style. They won't be so simple, but the style is similar. So I buy the October 65 put in Hutchison. Hutchison is a company, the name of a company. And I pay $5.20. The share price is currently $62.50. When will I start making money on this trade? It's called a break-even point. It's, just, it's something that is the first thing a trader would want to know. Okay? What's the answer to that? A, B, C, or D? Now I'll give you. I'll give you one more minute. So when it hits one hour thirteen. One hour fourteen, right? And I'll uh, I'll stop this. Don't don't ask your neighbor for the answer. Is everyone okay? I'm going to get out of this page. I'm, I'm going to leave this page. Do you still need to look at that page? Next time I might split the screen so you get to see both. Okay. But now I won't do it. This is a bit silly. Oh, oh man, <laughs> sorry about that. Wow, everyone got this, oh, hold on. Uh, okay, now, whoever picked D, don't worry about it, okay? Um, I'm not even going to find out who you are. Um, the correct answer is C. Uh, maybe you just had a fat finger. The reason is, so you buy a put at 65, well, how do you draw the payoff? It's like this. So at 65 is when you start making money, but you need to make, you know, you need to make a substantial amount. Oops. So it's really just asking where that point is. And, uh, the correct answer is it has to be 
or higher doesn't work, okay, because you are buying a put, you are long a put. So it has to be something, something and lower. Um, and as at 59.80, okay, is when you don't actually make any money. Now 59.80 is just 65 minus uh, 520. So at that point, you have $5.20 $5 of intrinsic value, which exactly equals to the amount you paid as a premium. Okay, But if it's beyond that, you will start to make money. Okay? Now I know it's very simple. The exam won't be like this, okay? So that's the piece of bad news for you. Um, it won't be so, but these are good practice. And uh, I'm gonna try and do that every week with you guys. Um, it, that, it actually gets a lot more fancy later on, and it can be quite challenging, okay? Um, so I think I, uh, and I will save this, so just to make sure I don't lose the notes. Save this, okay? And the, uh, the, the video, uh, sorry, the, the tutorial today has been recorded as well. Okay. Um, do, does anyone have any questions? Everyone is okay? Quite happy? All right, then I, I, I simply wish you a very good evening. And, uh, I look forward to seeing you in seven days. Mine is nine minutes. Uh, the, uh, the Thank you. Yeah, please form your, your, your teams, okay? And just uh, fill in that, that spreadsheet. Hi.